Did you know that Yarn is already on version 4.3? Or have you been running on version 1 as I've been doing up until now? Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. I've been working on upgrading most of my projects from Yarn 1 to basically the latest version of Yarn. And I thought for this last one that I've left here, I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm just going to walk you through all the steps that I've been doing and basically demonstrate how easy and quickly you can actually upgrade, at least for all the standard installations that I have. But I do believe that even for slightly modified or bigger projects, it's still straightforward to do. On here, I've got a small website from one of my cousins that I'm maintaining. It's nothing big. It's basically just a simple landing page which links to his two socials and if we go back to the editor we, you can see if I try a yarn version that I'm still running version 1.22 and I think even for the version 1 line this is not the latest version but what we want to do here is upgrade to yarn 4. Some context here from yarn 1 to yarn 2 you can imagine it's similar to going from angular 1 to angular 2 it's a totally different mindset so it's a big major upgrade and a lot of people including me have just avoided upgrading to yarn 4 but in recent days I've been started and migrated most of my projects and this one is the only one that's left so what do we have to do I think the easiest thing to do, and that's what I've been doing all the time here, is if you go to yarnpackage.com, there they have a good migration guide. And in my experience, you basically only need this step-by-step -step, uh, guide. And you have these six steps, and that's all you need. There's one tiny bit, which I will talk about later for the last one here, but let's jump straight into it, right? First thing, we need to make sure that it's on Yarn, that we are running on Node 18. And why is that? Because for the next step, we need Core Pack. And Core Pack is only available on newer Yarn versions, uh, newer Node versions. So let's do the check first. Node version. And you can see I'm running Node 2014. And if we go to node.js.org, you will see at the time of recording, this is somewhat new. So this is looking good. What I will do is I will go ahead and stick to this version and go to the next step. The next step is just to enable core pack. I think the latest version of uh, node already has this enabled, but let's enable it. If everything went well, you will basically see nothing, which is a good sign. So let's move on to the next step. Go into your project directory, which I am already. This is the direct, the project directory, as I, you can see. It's a simple old school next project. So we are in there, so we can go back to our version. Let's do the next step here and set our yarn version. And you can already see what's happening here. Different to the first yarn version, so yarn one, which is installed mainly via brew if you're on a Mac or sometimes even using NPM global. The latest yarn versions just literally live on, on uh, the project, so on the project level. And if we go back and uh, go into the code, uh, you can see here that we've now set our package manager to be yarn 4.311. This is the field that yarn will now look into to figure out what yarn version to use. One of the big benefits of this is that we are now, like that we just won't have any yarn version issues across teammates 
for example, or even between different environments, because the version is literally defined in here. Let's commit this. I will call this set yarn version and then move on to the next step. Convert your npm rc or yarn rc to a yaml file. If you have one, probably go in here, look at the details and see what you need to do. But if you look into ours, we don't have this one set here. So we should be good. So the next step is just running yarn install. And what you will see is this is a yarn lock file for v1. And if you now run yarn install, it will literally upgrade this to the latest version. And you can see this installation step it already even looks differently. But yeah, let's go ahead. We've done this. And if you now look into our code, you will see it's definitely looking slightly different now, which is good, which is exactly what we want. And you can also see that we've got a yarn RC file that says node linker node modules, which is something that we will look into later. But for now, we will basically commit all changes, but not fully. So one thing that I would have wanted to see in here is now you can see we have our yarn RC file, we've got our updated log file, but then we also got a install state file. And in total, you can see we have a new yarn like directory. So now the question arises, should I just git ignore this or what shall I do? If you go on to the question and answers bit section here, you can see a question, which file should be git ignored? If you click on this, you can see which files, if you're using zero installs, do this. And if you're not using zero installs, do this bit. So the question is, what, what am I doing? What are zero installs? Zero installs are a combination of two yarn features which basically means uh, if you're using yarn pnp and offline mirror that's basically when we use uh, uh, zero installs basically so what we will do if we go back is we are not using zero installs so what we will do is copy this bit, go to our git ignore, and then update this. Oh, we want to keep the node modules, but we update this one now. And now it will make sure that we do actually uh, ignore everything in Yarn, except for patches, plugins, releases, SDKs, and versions. And what does it mean? That means that settings and plugins and everything will now be committed to our repository and we will make sure that this is getting ignored now but we will make sure that anything that is regarding our package manager will be straight in our repository another reason or another like the reason why we're doing this is to avoid any conflicts when we work with different package manager versions. So whenever now we check out this project, we will always be on version 4.3.1 and there's no way that we will have any conflicts. So let's commit everything now. I will do this separately as I always do. Ignore package. Oh, let me call this yarn uh, folder with exceptions. Uh, and then 
regenerate log file. And there we go. And now we've got basically yarn version 4.3.1 installed, which is basically what we need, right? So now if we go ahead and push this, what should happen? I've got this deployed on Netlify. So let's have a look, go to my site overview and see how it's building. Now that we've got Node version 20 on our device, this should be running through. But in some cases, especially if you're managing your Node version yourself, what you want to do is make sure that on your server, you've got the latest Node version installed. And then if you need to, also SSH into your server and make sure that you enable core pack. Because it could be that because you're upgrading from a older version that you won't have core pack enabled. So you have to do this manually. In here, you can see we're now using Node version 2016, which is not the same version as the 2014 I had locally, but that's fine because we will see that here we are now using Yarn 4.3. Like even if the 1.17 was installed for, uh, for Netlify, I think they do it themselves. You can also now see what happened here, which is exactly what we want. And then if you go into the project, you can see everything worked as expected and there's nothing to be worried about. So going back to the terminal, there are a few steps that we had to do to make sure. Install the, or check and install a new node version, enable core path, and then basically just set the version. And that was it. Basically running yarn install did all the migration for us. Now, the biggest task here is to go into every single project and do the upgrade. And then at some point, once you've upgraded all your projects, we can go ahead and probably uninstall Yarn 1.22 in my case altogether using either Brew or NPM in whichever way you installed Yarn in the first place. I hope this video made sense and it helped you a bit. It basically shows that upgrading to the latest version of Yarn isn't that difficult. And one thing I wanted to show here quickly before we finish up is if you do something like latest, for example, it's throwing an error, but what we can do is just run this without latest. And then our latest version will just be here to select. It's basically nothing has really changed, but the internals and the optimizations are there and it's super beneficial. I hope this video helped and yeah, I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye.